You are going to love today's show. I'm asking, does God give us a soulmate? Oh, you won't know my answer till the show, but what about this? Love at first sight. Ah, uh, <laughs> we'll see what the sisters think. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Sister to Sister. You have joined a fabulous bunch of ladies. Now, Corey's not with us today, so we are four sisters strong. <laughs> and we can, we can yeah, do it, we can yeah, do it. Yeah, now, you send us questions all the time, and this question is about love. Okay, listen to this, <laughs> listen to this, you sent. I wonder if you had this in your life. Do you believe in love at first sight? Amy, do you? <laughs> love at first sight. I would say no, because love, I mean, you, it, it, there's several different kinds of love. The eros love, the, you know, Phileos. yeah, phileo love. I mean, you can generally love people, love somebody, but to love them with that covenant I want to marry you kind of love. I mean, that takes time. You, I got to know you before I love you like that, right? Yeah. So I would say I believe you can fall at first sight, not love at first sight. Maybe you're falling for them. Oh, you're smitten with them right away. Or you're, you've got butterflies right away. You heard their voice. Um, you, you could fall in lust That's at first right. sight and just like, your senses, your flesh is just in the driver's seat and you rush that thing. Um, but what I put, is, the best thing is to listen to your spirit. And do you have an inward witness? Should I continue? Like, like when I first heard Buck's voice, I knew on the inside, this is, my, this is who I'm gonna marry. Now, we dated two years before we got married and proved out the will of God. That's but right. I would say you've got to listen to the inward witness when it comes to falling in love. Yeah. Well, I yes. fell in love with um, long hair, <laughs> <laughs> black boy. leather jacket, <laughs> motorcycle. Pure steer. He, did, he didn't, he didn't oh, at he that didn't. time, but, oh, okay. he, but he, doesn't I, right. he does now have a piercing. Um, I, fe I definitely fell in love at first sight with George and I, we were really young teenagers. And it's been how many years? You won't say, okay. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of years, 50 years. Wow. Wow. Yeah, because you were That's a teenager. Beautiful. I was a teenager. You were a child That's bride. So beautiful. He grabbed you from the cradle. He did. <laughs> I was, no, I was a cheerleader. I was so good and he was so bad. But <laughs> I did. Sounds like Greece. It's just like Greece. Greece. Yep, and I am Sandy. <laughs> you are. Yeah, I really you know, am. All, all of what Pastor Amy just shared is, is you know, um, uh, you have heard my response on this before. I just wanted to add, for sure, the discerning of spirits is key. But I just want to challenge that sometimes what we think of love in the Western culture yes. is not that in other cultures. Why? And I often yes. refer to Fiddler on the Roof. You know, because yes. in some cultures there's uh, arranged marriages. Yes. And, that. Yes. and I love this song that she began to sing in there somewhere, you know, do you love me? Yes. I think I love you. Yes, I love you. I think I love you. You yeah. know, and as you, yeah, you had brought up point. about covenant, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, can you instantly, I, I do believe that you can discern to the point that there is that connection that, um, you know, excuse me, <clears throat> that, there's that connection um, that this person has something to do with your purpose, you, you guys. Yes. But yeah, love itself as we know it, I believe it's, it's, it's work. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's work to stay in love for all these years, but that's okay. What do you think, Roxy? Well, I'm gonna do true confessions here. Okay. Oh, good. You can't fall in and out of love, but I, I do have to say this to be totally uh. honest, because you know, Flo's sitting there and she's like all about <laughs> truth. <laughs> So Alan saw me, I had long, well then, dark brown hair. This is, you know. <laughs> uh, and he saw me from behind. So I have to say he was attracted to me Ooh. because of that. All right, so oh, we'll nice. get that out in the, 
I don't know if it was Eros, it wasn't sensual, hopefully not. I know my <laughs> husband, he's too cerebral to be that way. Yeah. But I was hugging a friend of his, a female, who was going through severe issues and I was praying for her. You were, this was in college, right? In church. Oh, in church, okay. While I was in law school. Okay, so, right. So, he didn't know me, but he was attracted maybe to the hair, but he assessed it on other issues. Oh, that's good. She loves the Lord, yeah, she's that's good. praying, that's good. she's, you know, cough, whatever it was, and then that grew, then you know that guy? Three months later, asked me to marry him. And I there said, woo, yeah. I'm in law school. I'm having a good, t good time just going out with you. I got to study. I can only do one thing at a time. <laughs> but there is sometimes God puts something in someone, but it's more than aerosensual love. If it's sensual, right. it's not going to last. Right. Well, you know what? I, it's funny because this next question says, does God arrange one soulmate? You talked about arranged marriages, but does God give us a soulmate? And I was going to say, because, you know, I, I, have, I answer sometimes, and my, quite, my answer would be, Amy already alluded to it. Pastor Buck tells that when he heard Amy's voice on the phone, when they, 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 someone just said, you should date my, this girl. He knew that's who he was gonna marry. It was such a God thing. So I'm gonna come to you again, Roxy. Do you believe God gives us a soulmate? Oh, I'm sorry, Kath, I don't. Oh my. You know, Second Peter says, he has given us everything we need for life and godliness. I feel like this word in the world, and if you research it, it goes back to ancient Greeks about men and women being divided and come together. And good, but anyway, what do we do about the single people that never have that soulmate? Um, God has planted within us. I have everything I need for life and godliness. <laughs> Alan is a helpmate. I am a helpmate to get to where God wants us to be. So if we feel like we need somebody else, then we may, we may sit back and not do God's will where we are at the time we are. You might miss it. Mm -hmm. Right, and then you're, gr you're so grieved when they don't meet your expectations. Only the Lord can meet those expectations. Yeah, and if I would place them on my husband, man, I yeah, smother. Yes, absolutely. Oh, oh, absolutely. What do you think, soulmate? I, no, <laughs> no, no. Okay. I, I do believe back to even the, the first question we talked about discerning, the gift of discernment is so important. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that you can sense purpose in a relationship that, you know, this is somebody you're supposed to be connected to. I think it takes a, it, the word says to test and try the spirit, you know? So I think uh, that is part of, as you were saying, even about the dating process mm -hmm. and, you know, seeing if, how this goes. However, um, I, I think sometimes what we do is we confuse soul mate with soul ties because yeah, the Bible right. does talk about yes. soul ties. And soul ties are not always good. Some right. are not good, some are good. So, like Jonathan and David had a soul tie, that was good. Husband and wife have soul ties, that, um, and, and that, that's a good thing. Um, so again, if you connect with a relationship that is toxic or unhealthy, you can have a soul tie in that, and you know, mm -hmm. that's a whole nother line of conversation. Now, the soul netting together is where I believe people think of soul mate, but that to me is a process that comes along afterwards. So. Um, most of us that are married, I'm sure that we have, we may not say it on TV, but there have been things <laughs> we had to work through, you know, mm -hmm. and, and those are the things that kind of, that's the fabric of us coming together as one. And so that knitting together of the soul, I think sometimes uh, the verbiage that we use is, this is my soul mate, right. um, mm -hmm. once that covenant has been sealed. Right, it's just different. You know, we're talking to all different generations here in our audience, and mm -hmm. it seems like young people just don't have this this um, <clears throat> determination to stay soulmates. What do you think? I don't think they see the the yeah. the, the need to, Kathy. I, 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 I don't know because the the young people. And you have a lot of young mm -hmm. people in your in mm -hmm. your church. And what I find, Amy, is like mm -hmm. there's so much of the Eastern culture that is infiltrated yes. into. And right. so our children don't like we say anointing. Mm -hmm. yes. They say energy. 
Yeah. Oh my. You know what I, I mean? I started using the word yeah. energy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. I'm like, there's no energy here. Yeah. It's the anointing, you know, wow. the life of God. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so well, that they e- they speak from their soul. They move by their soul. They're, 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 so that discipline, you know, somebody, well, it doesn't mm-hmm. take all of that. It doesn't, yeah. you know, because they're led by their soul. And this is why the word says we're to work out our soul salvation, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. With fear mm-hmm. and trembling. That's the part of us that we're constantly working on. Yeah. I'm saved. I gave my life to the Lord. I'm being saved, working out my soul's salvation. I'll be saved yeah. when I go on to be with right. him forever. But do you yeah. think they're soulmates? Well, I, I do want to jump on the soulmate side just a little bit because, mm-hmm. because it's not in the Bible, but helpmate is like, right. Yes. Right. Like, oh, okay. like Roxanne said. But I was just, <laughs> while you were talking, thinking about my story and, mm-hmm. and Buck's story. And I'm picturing God before the foundations of the world saying, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to call this couple. They're going to plant a church in Pittsburgh. I've got a purpose and a plan for their life. So here's Amy in Oklahoma City at musical theater, you know, in college. Here's Buck in Indiana. He's pastoring. I'm going to speak to Amy here. I'm going to get her to this Bible school where his brothers and sisters are going to be. They're going to say, you need to meet. And I just wonder... If when we're really seeking God, the steps of a righteous man or woman are ordered of the Lord. Right. So when you're really seeking him and we both really were in our, I mean, wholeheartedly, like we just want God's will and plan for our life. And how in the world would we have connected there? So you believe in soulmates? I I, I don't know if that's the term, but I think Mm -hmm. there's a divine purpose and call and Mm -hmm. assignment Mm -hmm. that God has really on all of our lives. And he gets you to the right place at the right time with the right person. Right, right. So we're talking about these, we're talking about love today, but there's a question that you sent to us and I'm not sure who did sent us this, but asked, is separation in marriage biblical? I'm not sure. Flo? The exact question I told her, I didn't, I didn't want to answer. <laughs> She's supposed to give me the second one, but it, anyway, that's my, that's my Kathy, y'all. That's my Kathy. Um, right? Yeah. Is, okay, you can say pass, pass. <laughs> you can pass. You can pass. That's not that easy, but yeah. Roxanne will have a scripture for me, I'm sure. So I have a scripture. If you okay, can I jump need. To, in. Do you yeah, want to take it? No, okay. Yeah. Look, tag your in. Tag. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tag right back. But, This scripture has always stuck with me out of Proverbs. And when I see this person in a marriage relationship, I cringe. And that's in Proverbs 30. Under three things, the earth trembles. And one of those is an unloved woman when she gets a husband. Oh, wow. Wow. What does that have to look that one up? What what translation is it? That's uh, the English Standard Version. It's right before the so woman it's, who's so awesome. 31. It's, yeah, you read 30, 21 through yeah. 28. Wow. Under these three wow. things, the earth, tr- mm-hmm. a, an unloved woman that yeah. is married to a husband. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it is mm-hmm. gut-wrenching. It's heart-wrenching. I mean, we sat in a meeting, you know, last week, and it was this story and thank Mm -hmm. God this couple made the changes and the shifts but I'm looking at this girl in her eyes and the the deep sadness to to feel unloved to your covenant partner Mm -hmm. um, is is not right so when somebody's heart is so hardened toward you Mm -hmm. I mean I would say uh, you have to get counseling and help Absolutely. and like real yeah. counseling, not yeah. like, you know, just sit down with a friend. I mean, like real counseling That's good. Do you have, before you, you make these decisions. Because yeah. my scripture girls, did yeah, you find I a scripture? I love that. I've never heard yeah. that before. Me either. And that yeah. is life changing. I do yeah. have to say this. People that are abused. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm. Which I run into a lot. I'm going to tell you this if you're abused, you know, because it says adultery. If you're unbelieving spouse, Mm -hmm. go. Oh, that's the only Mm -hmm. reasons. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this to that person. John 8, Jesus protected the woman caught in adultery. Mm -hmm. He did not let one stone touch her body. Mm -hmm. He does not want one stone, if you're a man or a woman getting abused, Mm, he doesn't want one stone to touch your body. 
Where are your accusers, he said. I don't accuse you either. Go and sin no more. But I'm going to tell you, if you're being abused, don't stay in that relationship. Ask the Lord. But Jesus protected the woman in sin. How much more is he going to protect you? And oh the my. difference between, you know, this is how I always seen it. I, I love which, which you, I couldn't have did it. I mean, that was excellent. But the thing of it is, is I believe separation is of God divorce is not his perfect will. Mm -hmm. And so the thing about separation, it gives you time to work it out and yes. get counseling and get to a safe yeah. place. Yeah. This so. is so good. This is so good. I, uh, whoever wrote that question and the, all of these questions about love, we hope that you're hearing from our hearts and stay right there. We will be right back. This is all about love. <laughs> we just want you to know that we really love you, our viewers. So appreciative. But this question that you sent us, hmm, I'm not crazy about it. It says, how do I approach my husband with a topic that I know is going to cause issues? If I were answering first, I would say, I don't. <laughs> but I'm going to go to Roxanne. Oh, uh, yeah, and I do too much. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Causing issues, what do you do? And that's why God gave me this scripture. James 3, the wisdom from ah. above is pure, peaceable, gentle, reasonable, <laughs> easily to approach, not judgmental. Man, that's all me slapped right in the face Ooh. because I like to confront. As soon as I'm disturbed, I want to go right at it. God has taught me to pull back. Mm -hmm. Where's your reasonableness? Where's your legal mind <laughs> when you're in conflict with your husband? Oh, it's all thrown out the window, you know. So it gives me grace for other people that throw all reasonableness out the window also. But I do have to say this that I learned is this issue, this topic, is it the real issue? What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. It has happened. I'm upset by some little trivial thing that blows up in my mind that's really big, but I'm really upset about something oh, that's else. That's true, that's true. So pray, <sighs> ask the Holy Spirit to show you, this is really what's going on in your mind. This person did this to you and you're taking it out on your husband because right. he did this right. and somebody else did this. The Holy Spirit is beautiful. He reveals, reveals mm -hmm. to us the thoughts and intents of our hearts yeah. and take the time to examine the real issue. Wow, that's pretty deep. Yeah, that's I think gently and, and timely, you know what I mean? Like that, that has been, I, I remember in the early parts of our marriage, you know, I had to learn like um, when, because I'm wanted like, let's get it now, right. you know? And you need to be, we were talking about discernment earlier, you know, on and, you do need to be sensitive to one another. Like, give them a chance to come home and reset and relax. And yeah. is this, do I need to address this right now? You know, and like the word says, a soft answer turneth away yeah, right. wrath, that's you right. know? That's and good. so it's the way that we word things, it's the spirit behind it. If I'm agitated, mm -hmm. To not your point, yeah, this, this is just like yeah. not the time, <laughs> not you know the time. what I mean? And, and too often I have approached it from my place of irritation Yes. And that doesn't always give us a good resolve because then it winds up going down a whole nother path. Yeah, so timely, not good. Amy. Yeah. Well, I mean, a wise woman builds her house. That's right. Yes. That's so, right. I mean, if you ignore things, stuff things under, let it build up and explode like a volcano, that's mm -hmm. not a wise woman building her house. Mm -hmm. So you've got to get a wise strategy. I mean, because when, I don't know about you, when something happens to me, like in marriage, and you, I feel like flames of fire inside. I just want to like... I can't believe that. And, and I don't want <clears throat> to say things yeah. that I shouldn't say that I, because right. I believe there's That's power right. of life and That's death right. in the time. So what we started mm -hmm. is kind of having like a family business meeting. Oh. And so I don't want to hear things every day that I'm doing wrong. Mm -hmm. I, and I don't want him to feel like that either. So we do it on Tuesdays because it's like our it's like a meeting day. So hey, let's talk about I, you know this happened with the kid. I don't like what you said here. Mm -hmm. You know when you didn't open the door for me, I got really ticked off. When you spent the you know whatever it is, spending kids, anything, bring it to the business meeting. 
Okay. And then problem solved. All right. Think about I'm it. having a meeting. Yeah. Not. I write That's okay. Meeting. That's all right. Kathy's okay. Kathy's not coming to the meeting. No, I'm not. I'm not. They're, no. Okay. That's okay. Everybody's different. And you know how I am. I don't like confrontation. Okay. So here's the thing. I don't know what to say to this person. I am engaged to be married. I've saved myself for marriage. That's so good. But my fiance has not. I'm struggling with thoughts that he will compare me to others. What do we say to this? Oh, I like this question. Good. It took me Take days it. to mull over <laughs> this, but yesterday something dropped in my mind. Yay, so I got to tell this sweet young, okay. this sweet girl. Tell this little girl. First of all, 2 Corinthians 10 says, they compare themselves yeah. among themselves and became mm -hmm. foolish. Mm -hmm. If he compares you, he's a fool. Secondly, if he ever decides to do it, You've got the upper ground here. Statistically, overwhelmingly, if you do not have sex before marriage, you are more likely not to have it in marriage. He can feel safe with your love. Can you feel safe with his? That's a question because statistically... Ooh, ooh, you're so meddling. Girl, girl, you got the upper hand. <laughs> Don't worry about it, because he can't compare. The right. Bible doesn't allow that. <laughs> you can't compare yourself. You move on. You're a treasure to him. He's a treasure to you, and you're going to learn and grow through whatever you need to grow to satisfy one another. Wow. That, that you know, wow. Rossi, I that is so good. But then at the same time, I, I think of the carnal nature, you know. Right. And so and after counseling and, and, and dealing with different things in, in life, you know, what it, it is a reality that the person can compare. They shouldn't. You're absolutely right. Biblically, it, it shouldn't happen like that. Um, but it is kind of that that happens often, you know, even, whether it's male or female, you know, right. hug me like Johnny, provide for me like Sam, you know, right, <laughs> uh, right. you know, kiss me like Tom, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, so I think the key thing is getting deliverance, Ooh. knowing, you know, that that's just my perspective, yeah. first natural, then spiritual. You know, that's the good. fact of it is if, I, if I've had several different lovers, then there are, it's almost, you, 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 I, I, I literally just uh, not too long ago had to have a conversation with a husband and wife and the wife had kept herself. No, no, it was the opposite. The 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 husband um, was you know a man of God and wasn't going to touch her until the wedding day real honorable and you know and she was excited about that but when they did come together it wasn't what she expected and she explained correct. all this to you yes mm -hmm. that's what counseling <laughs> <laughs> why well, haven't been to counseling my counselor is up there I mean, he's the best the, counselor I think this is why Plus, I approach oh, them to be off the right <laughs> No, really, I mean, um, somebody said you guys were doing an interview earlier on something called like taboo subjects. Taboo. Taboo yeah. subjects. And, yeah. and I did, obviously I haven't seen it yet. But these are some of the Thanks things that we, yeah, right? I haven't even seen it yet. <laughs> this is taboo. But I'm sure it was good. No. But, oh, good. Good. but, but, the, no. <laughs> but these are the things we don't talk about that we need yeah, to talk about that people good. are really Go struggling with in their marriages and in their relationships. And it's like, it's too late. I gave my life to the Lord when I was 30. By the time I hit 30, how many partners have I had? I don't you know? want to know that. <laughs> I, I have I no know. interest. But, then how, but how, no, seriously, as a pastor, <laughs> yes. how do you help? Because I got this <laughs> challenge that I'm having in my marriage is because comparison, which we know after walking with the Lord for a while and understanding the scriptures that I that's shouldn't do it. Right, but right. when I came to the Lord, I didn't know that. I've already been with this one, that one, you know, and he's been with this one, that one. And we have to quit, you know. No, no. It's we are in the world. That's right. Okay. That's a very good point. I mean, yeah. they're yeah. seeing yeah. this and yeah. then the, the woman cannot act like that. Sister, yeah. sister, sister, yeah. audience. We will resume this conversation <laughs> at a later date. But Maybe right we'll now, <laughs> we will wrap this thing up. Stay right there. You know, Scripture warns 
that we may seek spiritual gifts and skills, but without love, we have nothing. 1 Corinthians 13 describes this type of love in verses 4 through 8, and I read, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. With true love, character does count. And character is built through the circumstances that we go through in those conflicts. Let's decide to walk with Jesus and build that character building love in our lives. Wow, I love this whole love show so much. Love it, love it, love it. But guess what I also love this particular scripture that goes like this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman or a sister sharpen the other. Every single week I'm built up. Today I just really feel loved. We hope you enjoyed Sister to Sister. We hope to see you again next time. We are the sisters. <laughs>